Hello, I'm Eleanor. I work for Hastings Museum and Art Gallery. Welcome to the first of our festive make sessions. Over the next four weeks, I'll be sharing some simple and budget friendly ideas for making activities that you can do at home using materials that either you have already or that you can easily get from the supermarket without using any complicated equipment. There's a version for families and kids, unsurprisingly called Festive Makes for Kids, and a separate version for adults because I don't see why children should have all the fun. Um, so whether you're stuck at home on your own, you're in need of creative inspiration and activity, or you're looking for things to do for the kids, hopefully we'll have something for you. In future weeks, uh, I will be doing decorations, making simple presents, and also doing festive bakes. But this week is advent calendars and Christmas cards. Please don't be put off by the writing on the screen. It's basically a simplified version of what I'm going to be saying. But I know that people take in information in different ways, so I've included both. I hope my voice will be better company than bullet points. You can buy advent calendars on a range of themes and containing all sorts of gifts, and they're not just for kids anymore. But if you're reluctant to buy one, or you can't find one you like, you can always try making one instead. Traditional advent calendars start on the 1st of December, with a door to open or gift for each day on the run up to Christmas. But I'm not sure that's how kids think. So an alternative might be a countdown, how many sleeps till Christmas Day. And if the thought of doing 24 different days is too much, perhaps just make one for the last 10 or 7 sleeps before Christmas instead. I'm going to show you a simple way to make a personalised advent calendar, which can be adapted in lots of ways. It's made from materials you probably have at home, and it's essentially flat, as you'll see in a minute. I'm using a cork notice board to pin up my envelopes, but you could use magnets to stick them to the fridge or hang them on a length of string using pegs or paper clips. The design of your advent calendar will depend on what you're planning to put in each day, which in turn depends on who you're going to give it to. It might include Christmas activities, drawing suggestions, jokes and riddles, or a combination of all of them. For adults, a different family photo each day might be a nice alternative. If you want to include 3D gifts, you could have a no peeking lucky dip bag for every day or just a few specific days over the advent period. This means you can customise the goodies to individual interests and you're not restricted by shape and size. It also means if you're making the calendar for someone with dietary restrictions, you can make sure any edible goodies are safe for them to eat. I'm making life easier for myself by having a square card for each day, all the same size but with a different activity or drawing suggestion. I've cut the squares from some pieces of white card I had at home. If you don't have any cards, you can write on paper and then fold it up to go inside the pocket instead. If you've got some old Christmas cards that are blank on the inside behind the picture, you could cut these down and write on the back instead, then you wouldn't have to make pockets at all. To make each pocket, you'll need a piece of paper that's just over twice the width and height of your card. If you're going to write your activities on paper, I'd suggest making a template of one square out of cardboard from a cereal box or something similar to help you make your pockets. You need to put the card in the middle of the paper and then fold over each edge along the card in turn. When you open it out, this should leave you with a rough cross shape. Then if you want to, you can draw over the fold lines to make them easier to see. Using the folds as a guide, Cut away the paper in the two bottom corners so that you're left with a flap, which you can then fold over. Next, you need to fold over the two side pieces, making sure that they overlap slightly. Then use a bit of sellotape to stick it all together. Take the card out of the paper and put it to one side. At the top, we need to make a tab that can be used to attach the pocket to the pin board or the string. You can cut whatever shape you like, a bow, handles, or just a plain tab. Hold the layers of paper together and cut through them all so the shape you've cut is the same on each one. This makes the tab stronger. 
For my gingerbread house, the tab is the roof. I folded the top in two to find the middle and then folded the edges of the roof to show me where I needed to cut. I used a white paint pen to add the decoration, but you could draw the features using an ordinary pen and then paint on some snow afterwards. Finally, put your card or folded paper back in the pocket, attach it to the pin board or string and then repeat. The person using the advent calendar can either work their way systematically through each day or choose a random pocket. That way you don't need to number them all. You can make your pockets with different kinds of paper. Wrapping paper to look like presents, brown paper to make gingerbread houses like I've done, or plain paper that you decorate yourself with festive drawings, baubles or colourful numbers perhaps. I thought while I was with you I'd also talk a little bit about making Christmas cards. Apologies if you can hear the rain on the roof while I'm talking. If you've got card at home you can make two Christmas cards from each sheet, you just need to cut it in half. If you're using paper I'd suggest using a whole sheet and folding it twice to make one card. That does mean you only get one card from each sheet of paper but on the other hand your Christmas card will be more robust. The other tip that I wanted to share was that if there's something you want to include on your card but you find it really hard to draw, try having a, doing an internet search on your phone to find a simple drawing or outline of the thing that you want to include. If you then take a screen grab, um, that will stop you accidentally uh, going off to a different page when you're trying to trace the image. If you find the, then find the screenshot in your pictures and turn the screen up to maximum brightness, you should be able to see the picture through a sheet of paper. It can be a bit tricky because you need to hold the paper still without your fingers touching the screen uh, and then trace the outline of the image. These button bauble cards are really simple and quick to do, but I think they look really effective. You need to find some buttons that you no longer need. Um, if you haven't got buttons that are nice colours, if you've only got kind of boring shirt buttons, you might be able to colour them in with a sharpie or paint them first. You need to arrange the buttons on your piece of card, imagining that they're hanging from a branch or um, a mantelpiece uh, and then glue them on or use double-sided tape to stick them to the card. Uh, then you need to add the threads that the baubles are hanging from. I would use a ruler and try to make sure that the thread lines up with the middle of the button so it looks like um, it's really hanging off the string. And then you can tie a little bow, you can draw a little bow to show where the bauble is tied to the string. Uh, you can add a festive message like Merry Christmas or something at the bottom if you want to. Uh, those of you who are eagle eyed will have spotted that the card that I made, which is on the second photograph, is not as tall as the in progress shot. Um, and that is because when I tried to write Merry Christmas at the bottom of the card, I managed to leave the R out of Christmas. Um, so in the end, I just cut the bottom off and now it's a long thin card instead. This kind of design does work better on card or thick paper because of the weight of the buttons. If you like the bauble idea, but you don't have any buttons, there are a couple of other ways that you could produce something similar. You could have a look at home for objects um, which are an interesting bauble shape that you can use to make prints with paint. Or you could cut ba bauble shapes from wrapping paper, tin foil, or sweet wrappers from, you know, like um, roses or Quality Street, something like that. So cut them out and glue them on. If you really like the buttons idea, but you're not so keen on the baubles, you could try this ho 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 card instead, uh, which is even simpler. 
these cards use simple black and white to make pictures of snow falling at night. It's a chance to play with light and dark and to think about block shapes rather than drawing detail. I'd suggest starting by drawing your design out in pencil first and to start with using a simple idea so that you can see how it works. So this first idea uses black paper or card to start making a nighttime scene and then white shapes cut out and stuck onto the card make the picture. What I've done is created a landscape scene. Uh, I've made the road get wider as it comes towards you to give a sense of perspective. Uh, and the snowman, which of course in real life would be more white than black, unless it's uh, in a highly polluted area, um, makes a really nice simple silhouette at the base of the card. Then I've just used a silver pen to add the snow to the sky. For this idea, the aim is to create a window looking out into the night where the snow is falling. We start with a white piece of card or paper and we also need a piece of black paper to make the window panes. But before we cut them out, we want to introduce the snow. Uh, this can get quite messy, so make sure you've put down lots of newspaper around the piece of black paper which you want to make snowy using an old toothbrush and a very small amount of white paint. So you use the toothbrush to flick the paint onto your black card so it looks like falling snow. Uh, I discovered if you run your thumb along the brush towards you, it makes the flecks of paint fly away from you so you don't get covered in paint and hopefully you can get more of it on the paper rather than your surroundings. When your snowy black paper has dried, you can cut out the four window panes and stick them onto the white card. And then depending on how you're feeling, you can put a message on the bottom like I have with let it snow. Or you can add some more details to the picture to enhance the feeling that you're on the inside, nice and warm, looking outside into the snowy night. So that might be adding a standard lamp or some curtains to the window. I've added this ginger cat, uh, which I have to confess, I traced off my phone.
my final idea for the day to share are these smiley snowmen. You can get three snowman cards out of one piece of A4 card just by cutting it into three. It really does work better with card because the snowmen need to be rigid enough to stand up by themselves. Take your piece of card and fold it in half and then fold the ends back on themselves so you end up with a zigzag shape with four sections. Next you need to draw the basic outline of your snowman on the final section of one side of your zigzag. The snowman needs to have a flat bottom so that he's nice and stable and will stand up and the sides of his body need to go right to the folds so that when you unfold the piece of card you have four connected snowmen who will help each other stand up. You'll need some sturdy scissors to get through four layers of card that you need to cut at once. Then it's time for the fun bit, adding facial features and customising your snowmen. So I have just drawn on the eyes, nose and mouth, but you could alternatively uh, cut out pieces from um, paper or whatever and stick them on. Uh, and you can also give them scarves, buttons, even a jumper. Uh, I've used a bit of spare card to make one of my snowmen a bobble hat. If that seems fiddly, how about this idea that I found online? All you need to do is cut out or colour in the eyes, nose and mouth. And the white card becomes the face of the snowman. So I hope something out of all of those uh, was useful to you and that you've managed to have a go. If you have any feedback about the video and the activities, please do get in touch with us via Facebook. If you'd like to share what you've managed to achieve, I'd love to see what you've made. And you can post that on Facebook using hashtag festive makes next week. I'll be making Christmas decorations. I hope you'll be able to join me then. In the meantime, have a good week. Bye.